Hello, and thank you for joining us today at the Charge Virtual Conference on EV Engineering. The topic of this session is meeting new requirements for high voltage EV charging coupler, brought to you by Umicore. There will be a Q&A session after the presentation, so please submit your questions at any time by clicking the Q&A button on your screen. A recorded video of this presentation will also be available to view on demand after the session is complete. Please visit this session's registration page on our site for details. Our speakers today are Kevin Martin, Product and Sales Manager, Electroplating, and Robert Zybart, Sales Manager, Technical Services at Umicore. Welcome. Good morning and welcome. My name is Kevin Martin. I work with Umicore's Electroplating Group, and I thank you for joining the short discussion. Our topic today is meeting new requirements for high voltage EV charging connectors. So just a quick overview of how the material is organized. We will start with a brief introduction of Umicore, and then we'll cover some EV charging trends and highlight the performance requirements for charging connectors. We'd also like to highlight some challenges with the existing electroplating technology. We'll introduce Umicore's electroplated silver graphite deposit, which was developed for low friction and high wear resistance. We'll then cover some results from tribological testing for silver graphite and compare those with silver alloys and pure silver. And finally, as may be already mentioned, I will be joined today for Q&A by Robert Zebart, who is the manager of the technical division for Umicore's electroplating group. Umicore is structured into three segments of businesses, which are focused on catalysis, energy and surface technologies, and recycling, and has a strong global presence with over 11,000 employees. Umicore Electroplating belongs to the business unit called Metal Deposition Solutions, which is part of the energy and surface technology segment. The headquarters of Umicore Electroplating are located in Schwäbisch Gmünd in the southern part of Germany, about 45 minutes east of Stuttgart. The roots of the organization go back to 1888 starting as a precious metal refining company to service the local goldsmith and silversmith industries, later expanding into electroplating and then becoming part of Degusa AG in 1957. Over time, Degusa developed a reputation as a technology leader for electrolytes and inert electrodes. In 2003, the Belgian materials group Umicore took over the former precious metal operations of Degusa AG. Schwäbisch Gmünd became the headquarters for all activities of the Umicore electroplating business unit and since 2020 formed the new business unit Metal Deposition Solutions. Our competence in precious metal plating is going into applications like connectors, lead frames, PCBs, smart cards, and semiconductors, which are used in markets like automotive, wearables, industrial, and medical products. In the next slides, we will present some EV charging trends, introduce some new requirements for charging connectors, and discuss some commonly known challenges. EV growth and faster charging. According to IEA, International Energy Agency, global EV ownership by registration grew to 16.5 million units in 2021, with an estimated new unit sales of 6.6 .6 million. EV market share was forecast to be at 13% of global car sales in 2022. The chart on the lower left shows the greatest growth in China followed by the US. Charging station growth has been near 40% year over year with the strongest growth segment being DC fast charging ports. The table on the right gives an example of 2022-2023 models in production and the respective charging performance. The green and blue highlighted rows are evidence that high voltage DC charge capability 
is not exclusive to higher-end luxury cars and is a driving factor in purchasing decision. With the wider adoption of high-voltage DC charging infrastructure, there are increasing requirements for electrical component reliability for both EVs and EV chargers. And to be discussed in more detail, the performance of charge coupler connectors has reached a limit for high-voltage DC conditions. On this slide, we can see a typical high-power transfer flow from a charging station to an electric vehicle. During charging, the electrical energy is passing various connectors and devices. Parts like the charging plug, the inlets, the connectors, and interconnects have special requirements. Such requirements are described, for example, in the IEC TS62196 standard for the connectors which are used in the charging plug and inlet and how to handle power for both AC and DC conditions. High power charging conditions are described by power capacities from 50 kilowatts up to 500 kilowatts. To charge an EV battery from 10 to 80% in 30 minutes or less, power capacities of 150 kilowatts and higher are required and can only be supported by high voltage DC equipment. The best charging performance for any given EV and charging port requires optimum connection at the charging coupler interface. If the contact surface is contaminated with debris, damaged, or has wear causing increased resistance, then excessive heat is generated during the charging cycle. High voltage DC chargers are designed to continuously monitor temperatures and will reduce the charging voltage or shut down when excessive temperatures are detected. To ensure efficient, high power transfer in a short period of time, the automotive industry needs solutions utilizing advanced silver coatings on charging coupler contacts. This slide includes a summary of industry feedback regarding plating requirements for high power connectors. As previously described, the connectors for high voltage DC charging must have current carrying capacities up to 500 amps. Standards specify a minimum of 10,000 wear cycles. However, many users are requesting 50,000 cycles and higher. And for a growing number of applications, the use of a post plating lubricant is not allowed. The contact surfaces must have low contact resistance so the plated finish must maintain a high conductivity throughout the specified number of cycles. Also required is long-term stable hardness of the plated deposit, which is described by a minimum of 1,000 hours or the specified end-of-life condition. The plated deposit requires a temperature stability up to 150 degrees C, and in some cases, 180 degrees C. Silver plating has been the standard for high power applications due to its high electrical and thermal conductivities. However, there are some limitations to silver that will be discussed next. Limitations of pure silver as a connector finish for charging applications. The image on the left represents a typical connector pair for a charger coupler application. However, there are various proprietary designs available. The contact on the vehicle side is the male or pin connector, and the contact on the charger side is a female or socket connector. For DC charging, there are two pin and socket connections on each CCS connector. For this example, the connectors were plated with eight microns of pure silver. An individual cycle involves the insertion and unplugging of the connector pair. The image on the right shows the result to the connector pair after 3,000 test cycles. The wear off of silver, as shown here, is common when no lubricant is used. The wear and galling of the silver deposit becomes more severe with increasing wear cycles. This continues until the barrier metal or substrate alloy becomes exposed, resulting in oxidation and an increase in resistance across the surface of the connectors. According to IEC 62196, 10,000 wear cycles are required under dry conditions 
without exposing the nickel barrier layer or underlying substrate. In the next few slides, I'll be introducing Umicore's silver graphite dispersion electrolyte, Arguna C100. Arguna C100 is a proprietary dispersion electrolyte that can deposit advanced silver graphite composites. The silver graphite composite is intended for high power contact applications requiring a high number of mating cycles. The plating chemistry was formulated for rack and barrel applications using typical plating equipment. The embedded graphite particles significantly reduce the coefficient of friction. This will be shown in more detail on the next slide. Case studies have demonstrated well over a 50% drop in coefficient of friction compared to pure silver. However, actual results will vary depending on the connector design and the test conditions. Lower insertion forces have been demonstrated on pin and socket connectors designed for high voltage applications. With increased lubricity and a lower coefficient of friction, galling and wear off is mitigated and more silver remains on the connector, which results in a lower contact resistance over the operating life of the connectors. The image at the upper right shows an SEM of a deposit from an Arguna C100 silver graphite dispersion electrolyte. Actual thickness requirements depend on the end use application with a minimum thickness of 8 micron recommended for high wear cycle requirements. The quantity, size, type, and quality of the graphite particle used for the composite was carefully selected based on multiple criteria. First and foremost, the electrical performance of pure silver needed to be maintained. Second, the quantity of the graphite needed to provide sufficient lubrication for a target of 10,000 mating cycles. Third, the mechanical stability of the embedded graphite particle needed to be ensured. And finally, the compatibility of the graphite and the electrolyte was required to maintain uniform co-deposition in the composite. The Arguna C100 is currently installed at customer sites and producing prototype designs and commercial production. Umicore Electroplating Group can facilitate sample requests at our on-site job plating shop in Schwäbisch Gmünd, Germany. This table compares the results from wear testing pure silver, silver antimony, silver palladium, and finally the silver graphite composite. A tribometer was used with flat and pin substrates, with each deposit having a thickness of 15 microns. The testing was done under varying normal force conditions from 1 newton to 5 newtons. A wear track of 10 millimeters was used at a frequency of 0.25 hertz. The target was to achieve 10,000 cycles. In addition to observing wear and determining coefficient of friction, data was also generated for contact resistance, along with listing the values for hardness and thermal stability for both the alloys. Wear through is determined by visual inspection, by observing any exposed underlying nickel and or substrate material. Wear through of the silver deposit with no lubricant was observed after only 100 cycles. Hardness of the deposit was measured before and after heat treatment, with pure silver having 90 and 70 Vickers hardness respectively. Arguna 630, a silver antimony alloy, showed improved performance over pure silver with wear through not observed until 1000 cycles. Arguna alloy, a silver palladium alloy, had further improved performance with wear through happening at 2000 cycles. The increase in performance of these two alloys can be attributed to an increase in hardness, which coincides with a reduction in the measured coefficient of friction. However, they both still fall short of approaching 10,000 cycles for a thickness of 15 microns. In addition, it is well known that electrical performance decreases when adding alloying metals to silver. Indeed, contact resistance was measured to increase with both silver alloys tested. 
Finally, comparing the silver graphite composite shows much improved results. For Arguna C100, no wear through was observed to substrate or barrier nickel, even after 50,000 cycles. Contact resistance was much improved for silver graphite and very stable throughout the testing. At 5 newtons force, the contact resistance of silver graphite was 50 microohms and much lower than either of the tested silver alloys. Further testing was done on a specific pin and socket connector pair similar to that used for EV charging applications. For both pure silver and the Arguna C100 silver graphite composite, the results agree with the data shown on the previous slide. An image of the connector pin coated with silver graphite composite is shown after 50,000 cycles on the upper left side of the results table. No exposed nickel or substrate material was observed. The image just below shows similar results on the paired contact finger. The initial contact resistance of 60 microohms was maintained after 50,000 cycles for silver graphite composite. The images on the right show the test results for the same connector design, except only using pure silver with no lubricant. The test was stopped after 10,000 cycles and exhibited extreme wear off of the silver deposit and the substrate material was easily observed on both the pin and the contact finger. And finally, as expected, for pure silver plating with no lubricant, the contact resistance increased by more than 2x after 10,000 cycles. In summary, Arguna C100 can help customers meet the requirements for 10,000 plugging cycles as defined by IEC 62196. Umicore's silver graphite composite will help maintain low contact resistance over the operating lifetime of pin and socket connectors for EV charging applications. Testing has shown that at 8 microns thickness of Arguna C100, we can achieve 50,000 plugging cycles with no exposed nickel or substrate material. Compared to pure silver at eight microns thickness, which will show total wear off of the deposit after 2000 cycles, depending on connector design. 50,000 successful connect disconnect cycles would equal 14 plugging cycles per day over a 10 year period. Compared to 2000 cycles for pure silver, which would be less than one plugging cycle per day. Arguna C100 will help maintain reliable electrical contact and prevent excessive heat generation to ensure efficient EV charging and high power applications. Thank you for attending our presentation and we look forward to your questions. Thank you, Kevin and Robert, for the fantastic thorough presentation there. Yeah, we do have time for some questions. And I think if I welcome both my speakers on, um, you should be able to start working through them. Right, thank you. Um, this is Robert Siebert speaking. Uh, Chloe, thank you for your support here and to have the opportunity to present our um, presentation here. Um, yeah, I would like to start with the first question I have here. Um, there's a question that's come from Eric Vega. His question is, uh, how does a startup company get a hold of your team to buy any of your silver plated connectors? So um, we are a chemistry company. So what we're doing is we support you in the way of you sending your connectors to us and we plate what you are requesting. That means uh, with nickel underplate plus the C100 on top. So we're supporting here and in the way of you are testing these connectors and you're satisfied with the performance, then we can help you to, um, um, to, to find a plating shop who have this kind of chemistry in the house or to set up um, plating. Uh, uh, if you have the plating in house, we can help you to support, to uh, do for a makeup and uh, the whole setup, how to plate. And uh, <clears throat> this is Kevin. Uh, again, thank you, Chloe. And thank you to all the participants who are attending. Um, I'm gonna jump in here and answer a question. Is silver graphite compatible with pure silver 
and silver alloy connectors? And the quick answer to that is yes. Um, we've done testing with both pure silver and silver alloys, and you do get the lubricating benefit if you have the C100 on at least one of the connectors. Um, but one thing to keep in mind is if one of those connectors is already worn from previous use uh, due to poor lubrication or debris, then it can be detrimental to the life of uh, the mating connector pair. So, and, and this is kind of, I guess, what we would expect um, if you think about a charging station that's available to the public, you, you're going to have a mix of connectors uh, from different vehicles and different conditions. And so uh, it, the short answer is, yeah, we have to be compatible. We're anticipating that. But uh, if connectors get worn out on one side of the connector pair, then it can have an influence over the lifetime as well. So. And I'm um, just looking through for another question here. Um, I'm gonna answer this question. Uh, it says, how can I get a test report to be shared uh, to my engineering team? Um, feel free to reach out to Robert or myself directly at the email shown. And uh, we'll talk to you about specifically what you're looking for. Um, and uh, if we have some data that we can openly share, then we can definitely do that. And then if there's some specific needs you need or some testing that needs to be set up, we can help support that as well. And so uh, I'll jump on another question here. Uh, do you have any direct contacts in the US? Uh, yeah, that's myself. I'm based here in Pennsylvania. So uh, feel free to reach out to me directly again at the email shown, kevin.martin at am.umacore.com. And I'd be happy to set up a time to chat with you um, privately. So maybe, uh, maybe Robert, here's a question for you. Uh, how stable is silver graphite at high temperatures? Yeah. Um, yeah, how stable is the silver graphite at high temperatures? So up to now from the industry, especially automotive is requested uh, typically 150, 160 degrees Celsius or even up to 180 degrees Celsius. So under these conditions, uh, we um, didn't find any deviation uh, stability. That means the um, embedding of the graphite in the silver matrix is still stable. We see after such kind of uh, temperature penetration also no increase of contact resistance. So it's very stable, it means on the same level like a pure silver. And even after such kind of 10,000 cycle test, it even shows a stable or slightly decreasing in contact resistance as well after such kind of tests. So yeah. The silver graphite uh, layer is very stable up to 180 degrees Celsius, what is up to now requested in the industry. And maybe uh, uh, another one for you, uh, Robert, is uh, will silver graphite benefit AC applications as well as DC? Oh yeah, that's also a good question. Yeah, what we see in our projects uh, with the industry, that means mainly with the automotive, um, uh, there are two different kinds of connectors. Uh, there are AC connectors and DC connectors, what you can find for charging. And um, the AC connectors are mainly covering all the power below 50 kilowatts. So what we see in the field, uh, these connectors are much more and stronger penetrated as the DC connectors, because typically everywhere, local spots, during buying or at home, you have such kind of technology to charge your uh, car. And this happened by far more often as you're using the DC connectors. Therefore, the penetration is much stronger. And that's one of the reasons we also tried in this uh, presentation to demonstrate we can also achieve more than the 10,000 cycles. And especially for the AC connectors, up to 50,000 cycles. So this is helping also to guarantee that you have no malfunction on your connectors during the charging. Okay, um, here's another question uh, that I'll 
I'll go ahead and take. It's uh, how is the fretting performance? And so fretting, you know, high high frequency, um, maybe vibration type wear, um, as opposed to, you know, connect and disconnect type uh, connectors. So we we have uh, done some work on that with a customer before, and uh, we have seen really good results with that as well. Unfortunately, we can't we can't share that because the, the test data is very specific to their design. But uh, the lubricity of the graphite also helps out with these uh, with uh, conditions where you're trying to mitigate any kind of fretting corrosion. Uh, so again, that's something that if you're interested in doing taking a closer look at that, I think it would be good to contact us. Uh, separately and, and we can talk about maybe what we've done in a, a little bit more detail as well as uh, what we would suggest as far as testing going forward. There's also another question I see um, there's um, written, how can the specification require 10,000 cycles if so cannot pass 2,000 cycles? So, um, um, the answer is quite simple. So as described in the, in the presentation, uh, we have here a silver layer matrix. And in this matrix, we have embedded uh, graphite particles. So after the first plug uh, you're using um, the silver graphite, it starts uh, to expose um, the graphite to the surface and it's creating a very thin film. So in this film is already supporting the way to reduce your coefficient of friction is reducing also your plug force and it and this is supporting and ends up in high cycle um, uh, achievement in the way of to achieve the 10,000 cycles or even more so and this is something what PUSO cannot yeah so PUSO has not this kind of wear capability you have after a certain cycling already um, this kind of galling effect. And this is what why uh, silver cannot achieve these kind of requirements up to 10,000 cycles or even more. This is the difference here where you have the advantage of this silver graphite layer from the Aguna C100. So we've got time for one more question if you want to take any more. So, so Robert, maybe, I, I don't know if you want to try to answer this one. Uh, did you combine high temperature and yeah, self spray tests? I've seen the same one. Um, yeah, so uh, we cannot do the, we cannot perform such kind of tests. This is typically uh, performed by our project partners where I have these kind of test equipments. What I can say, yes, uh, in these projects, they tried um, to achieve or pass the salt spray test in combination with high, high temperature. Um, it's typically combined in the test, uh, the salt sand test. And some of them, they tried also the high temperature. Um, apply the high temperature on that as well, uh, just to see where it came uh, up, how many cycles. So uh, yes, we can also pass here the 10,000 cycles. And, uh, but what I can also say, the penetration is definitely by far stronger, but even here also the exposed graphite uh, is helping to achieve the 10,000 cycles. But in this combination, yes, um, you have also look into your design and at the end, if you go these tests, uh, what kind of uh, target thickness you will want to apply. Yeah, and here's the difference again, what I tried to explain before, um, the requirements for the AC and the DC connectors in the way of what kind of contact force uh, is required. It's also uh, um, a key factor, which is penetrating here uh, and uh, additionally. So in, in the right setup, yes, we can pass this also in this combination. Now, thank you both, Kevin, Robert, for that thorough presentation and answering some of the questions that have come through as well. Um, if you've sent a question through and we haven't had time to answer it, um, the team will get a copy of all the questions, so I'm sure they will try to reach back out to you. But yeah, thanks to Kevin, Robert and the team at Umacor for today and, of course, to you, the audience, for attending. Thank you.
Yeah, thank you, Chloe.